Hey guys, Massive Dynamic here with an alternate method of balanced train loading or unloading. Take a look at what we're what we've got here. What we've done is taken a red wire and we've attached it to each of the chests here. So these six chests attached it to the power pole and then to a decider combinator with the condition each greater than zero output A with the input count. So what we're doing is we're taking whatever's in the chest we're adding them together and we're going to output it as A, with the new signal A. Okay, and then on a discrete network, so in other words, this red wire does not attach to this red wire, we do the exact same thing, these six chests to the power pole and to this decider combinator, and this one we're calling B. So, the reason is that if we have uh, three wagons, we would do a C, and if we had a fourth wagon, it would be D, and the fifth wagon would be E and etc. And the reason that we letter them that way is because in the next step, what we do is we convert that. What we do is we compare A to B. So if A is less than or equal to B, then we output a one with a signal of one. And if B is less than or equal to A, then we output a two with a signal of one. And then we attach that to our input belts here and we check if a is greater than zero if I'm sorry if one is greater than zero then we enable this belt which feeds bay a which is bay one and here if two is greater than zero then we turn that one on which enables feeding of belt b or belt two so let's turn this on and take a look at how this works so we'll see that both lanes get fed with uh, sulfur to fill the wagons and it nothing happens here until these chests start to fill up so what this does is if for whatever reason one wagon gets full before another wagon it will send all the resources to the wagon that needs the more resources so let's say that I go ahead and put a bunch of sulfur let's put uh, a stack in that chest there you'll see that lane B gets cut off it doesn't need any because the chest is full so the system knows that lane A needs more resources because lane B is overstuffed already and then as soon as yeah, you see that as soon as those resources get used up then it turns lane B back on so that the supply is equalized and once uh, things, once the wagons get full, then we'll see that, let's go ahead and let's see if I have enough to fill one of them. I can almost fill one of them. Here, let's take some out of here. We'll go ahead and fill this wagon completely. There we go. That'll cut off the supply to that wagon. And then we'll throw this and all this in that wagon. Did I do that right? Yeah. Throw all that in that wagon. And we'll see that, so as long as these chests have sulfur in them, these will be cut off because these don't have any sulfur in them. And let's say I cleaned out these chests a little bit. Let's say like that. Okay. And then if I throw, what well, was 19? So there's 11. And you'll see right there, you'll see that it switches because these have more material in them than these do and then you'll see that it'll oscillate back and forth keeping the chests balanced on the input side so yeah that works pretty good guys take a look at it see what you think so the only thing is here's a bigger example using blue belts and much more material so here we have an example where two of the wagons have been filled and two of them are getting constantly emptied because we have these magic wagons here but if i go ahead and stop that one you'll see that very shortly as soon as that wagon fills this is going to take a while because these wagons are gigantic um, but i can't help it along by throwing this little bit in there um, but this wagon here is struggling to get filled while these are all already filled and so this one will get cut off so the difference is here we have uh, four bays. So we have bay A, bay B, bay C, and bay D. Also we have double-sided loading. 
So it's a little more complicated, but all we had to do was wire these chests together with these chests so that all of these constitute bay A, and then the same thing for bay B, bay C, and bay D. So we have four separate uh, bays indicated, A, B, C, D, and then we convert that to A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, and D is 4. And we have to compare each bay against each other bay. So we check A, B less than, um, I'm sorry, A is less than or equal to B. And if so, we output a 1 on 1. And if B, A is less than or equal to C, then we output a 1 on 1. And if A is less than B, then we output a 1 on 1. We do the same for each bay. And so now, instead of checking where over here, we check if uh, 1 was greater than 0 because we were only comparing with one other bay. Here we're comparing with three other bays, so now we're checking if four in this case is equal to three because we're doing three comparisons. So each one checks if three is equal to three, if two is equal to three here, and if one is equal to three, you just saw. So depending on how many bays you need, you just have to adjust the number of checks that you have to do and your total um, output that will cut off the supply. So here we have the three bays have, or the yeah, the three wagons have been filled, and the fourth wagon is the only one that needs uh, to get filled. And so all of the resources are diverted to that wagon. So there you have it, guys. I hope this helps you. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think this is a good idea or a bad idea, or if you want to see something different. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.